There has been a noticeable shift in the forecast track. Forecasters say this storm could be one of the strongest ever to hit the Tampa Bay region. Phoenix is now a Category 5 hurricane. It is a historic storm and unfortunately making a beeline right now for our area. Oh my goodness. Hurricane Phoenix just south of Jamaica now. Phoenix is currently expected to make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 2 storm, but of course, always, we are keeping a close eye on this system. There has been a noticeable shift in the forecast track from the NHC overnight, which now brings Phoenix into our viewing area, possibly as a strong hurricane. Now is the time to begin those preparations, folks. We have breaking news this morning. If you're just joining us, the National Hurricane Center has upgraded our entire viewing area to a hurricane warning as Hurricane Phoenix is projected to make landfall as a major hurricane sometime tomorrow. Mandatory evacuations are in effect for all coastal regions. Forecasters say this storm could be one of the strongest ever to hit the Tampa Bay region. We cannot stress enough how crucial it is that you finish your storm preparations tonight. Conditions will deteriorate rapidly tomorrow morning and evacuation routes will quickly become impassable. Please don't take this lightly and heed all evacuation orders. Folks, this is unfortunately the worst case scenario unfolding for the Tampa Bay area. Phoenix is now a Category 5 hurricane with maximum sustained winds at 160 miles an hour. The wind gust up to 200 miles per hour. This is catastrophic. It is a historic storm and unfortunately making a beeline right now for our area. We have a live look right now at North Tampa and Polk Street. I believe this is near Kawa Coffee. And as you can see, the storm surge has completely inundated downtown. Law enforcement now is reporting that all bridges have been cut off by storm surge. We're looking at up to 20 feet of storm surge in some spots. We're trapped on the third floor of the Tampa General Hospital parking garage and the storm surge is up to the second floor of the hospital. St. Petersburg is essentially an island right now. A viewer from Brooksville is reporting roofs being torn off of businesses there, so this is a very important reminder that this is not just a coastal storm. We are seeing significant wind damage well inland. The damage this morning is unimaginable. The beaches are essentially gone. The Howard Franklin Bridge is completely destroyed. I've never seen anything like this. Officials are scrambling to clean up debris from local airports in order for supplies to be flown in. We are getting reports from Homosassa of residents trapped by downed trees. There's not a single business that we've driven by that doesn't have significant damage. Tampa General Hospital has told us that they are unable to receive any patients after the hospital suffered significant damage from wind and storm surge. The level of destruction out here is indescribable. It's going to be a very long road to recovery for the Tampa Bay area.
that was some terrifying moments to, to ride that storm out. I mean, this storm took our family business. It took both of my son's homes. It took 75% of our community and destroyed all of the structures. No other city experienced anything like ours as far as devastation. It was a terrible, terrible sight. Remember, my home and all the landmarks that I'm accustomed to referring people to, Miss Sue's house with the blue roof, John's house with the bird house, they were all gone. There were no landmarks. I mean, this is our livelihood. This is how we make a living. This is this is what we do every day. We come to work. And Michael's got it strode all over the all over the ground. And and so there were some. I mean, those are tough feelings when you're in your 70s to see that. You've worked all your life for that. I was crying on other people's shoulders just like they were crying on mine. I had some emotional issues that I just had to, to sort out. And I just had to sort of regroup. I had to pull back and, and, I mean, when I say I withdrew, I did. I went literally either in my truck or in my bedroom or in, I, I had to gather my thoughts before I could even approach anybody. And I mean, even my sons. I mean, they, they were devastated. But the majority of the mom and pop business people, to me, they're the salt of the community. They're the, they're the backbone of a, of a community. The people of this town are remarkable. We helped hunt for pictures or baby shoes or anything that people could were, were trying to find. It just gave us a sense of uh, togetherness that was sort of gave me some peace. Yeah, we lost a lot of things, but the best thing we can do is get busy, focus on putting our business back together, and that's exactly what we did. They gathered what they could, stored that away, and started making plans to get back to work. I was prepared for a hurricane, but I wasn't prepared for all this. I wasn't prepared for my city to be devastated. I wasn't prepared to come home to a town that was flattened. And it reminded me of things I had seen on television with a bomb explosion or a tidal wave. It was unbelievable. I mean, my heart just sank because this was our little spot in paradise. I worked my way to the canal here where I kept my boat and the canal was so full of debris. You could barely see that there was water in the canal. Off to my right, there were two boats sitting up on the hill here in the road and there was another boat behind us that was pushed all the way almost to Highway 98.
we were helping as much as we could until the day I got a phone call from the boatyard saying, you've got to come move your boat. And my question was, where am I going to put it? Fortunately for us, Captain Anderson's pier in Panama City Beach, uh, they had spot and I was able to move my boat over there, park it, and we could start making repairs to my charter boat. So as a small business owner, I had to turn to the Small Business Administration, some of FEMA, those type of things to go, hey guys, I need help. So basically we had enough money to pay for a place to park our boat. Our insurance helped us with repairs and we just kind of sat there and uh, worked on helping the community at the same time doing what we could to get our business at least to where it was floating. Through some blessings of uh, a couple of my sponsors, uh, we were able to purchase the boat behind us. And one of the main reasons we bought it is we could get out of town. I could put it on a trailer and haul it north. I believe that this is where the good in people really comes through. And the support that we got along with our community was overwhelming. In Mexico Beach, every restaurant suffered uh, either catastrophic or major damage, uh, and coming back for us has been tough. It was a, a harsh reality. I didn't really venture out far from the house, maybe a two block radius that afternoon, but got up bright and early the next morning and walked the mile down to the restaurant site and found basically a pile of what was the townhomes across the street laying where our restaurant used to be. Very few items left from our restaurant on our site. They were half mile uh, inland from here. I uh, wound up buying the, uh, the concession trailer and having it built on my own. Unfortunately, my father passed away a couple of years ago and I. I think this is where he meant for me to, to spend the money that he left me uh, to get back into business. We went down and set up a little organization called Camp Happy Tummies, and we fed 1,500 meals a day for the next six and a half weeks or so to, uh, to the people of Mexico Beach, the first responders, the survivors, the volunteers, all that. You know, I get there before daylight and there back home after our dark with a generator powering the one lamp in my refrigerator at home. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was a great feeling to know that we were doing what little bit we could to help people in town because there really wasn't a whole lot going on in that direction at that time. One pizza place did not come back. Sharon's Cafe. Two cans, the big bar and restaurant on the beach, completely gone. We never, ever had a competition-based restaurant uh, atmosphere in, in this town. Every single restaurant tour to a man was, was there to help every other one. If you ran out of something, I got it, come get it. I don't want a person in town eating with me every meal, every week, all week long, you know? They, they need to go out and see the other people. If they like us enough to come back once or twice, 
bonus, but uh, you know, the thing is you need to come to a town and experience more than just one place. Every morning at 11 when we uh, turn the open sign on and, and you see there's a line of people outside the trailer, it's like, wow, that's, that's, I mean, that, that's great. It really is. Uh, it touches me, man. It really does. When your time comes and you draw the short straw on a category five storm, you need to be gone. You're gonna be exposed to considerable damage or loss. Don't let that entrepreneurial spirit be a casualty of the hurricane. My advice to every small business owner is have all your business documents somewhere that you can take with you. Have an exit plan of what you're going to do, how you're gonna shut your business down to go through the storm. Anyone in business, whether you're doing a restaurant, vacation rentals, or, or the, the boat charter captains, you have to find a way to be creative to do that. Kevin's doing sunset cruises uh, instead of charter fishing things. If you're willing to adapt, and learn that you know post-disaster rules are different than they were before. You can make it. You know everybody's resilient in their own way, but you gotta you gotta be willing to uh, adapt and change. You can download a, a loan document from the Small Business Administration now and have it so that when it's time, you fill it out and send it in. Make sure you've got plenty of insurance. Make sure you don't skimp on it. You've got to replace your business. You want to be covered. Nobody who lives in the Gulf is going to be 100% safe from it at any time, ever. But if you have insurance, make sure your home is resilient in all the hurricane preparedness ways. Now I have hurricane windows as well as hurricane shutters. I have all the proper tie downs in my attic. My youngest son, the owner of the business, he found some people to patch the roof. There was about five panels missing. All the, the, the big roll-up doors were blown out. Lee took the initiative to just frame those doors in, take an old door that we had in the warehouse and just put it in there like a storefront. We just were creative and innovative and found a way to take what we had, patch it up, and uh, make the best of it. One year out, there was there was a lot of hope. I mean, it was a great celebration. Everybody got together and uh, recognized, held hands, broke bread together, had drinks together. There was probably three three thousand people at this uh, this little get together. So that was very heartwarming. And I think there's plenty of uh, hope for everybody post disaster. Our regrowth has come further than I thought it would. We're just a small spot on the map. Our hearts are big. We're back up and we're, we're fighting strong.